Hey, welcome. Welcome back, whichever the case may be, to the channel. This video is going to be kind of a crossover episode. We're going to do a little bit of retro computing, a little bit of retro gaming, some audio production, some synthesizer work, and uh, sort of mix it up, which, you know, is kind of on brand for my channel. A little bit ADD, call it Renaissance Man. But what we're talking about here is this project. It's uh, an MT32 on a Raspberry Pi. MT32 Pi is the project. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I believe, and I built the hat on top using an open source project that's out there, which I'll show you some of the options. About a year, year and a half ago, I don't remember why I went looking, but I went looking for something like uh, an MT32 or similar, and remembered I actually had one back in the late 80s, mainly for gaming, but I also used it back then for recording because it was what I had. It had a MIDI input on it. You could play back some sounds, and away you go. Uh, so I went digging on, on this particular project, and what I found in the process was there's a whole bunch of stuff on how to use this with the Mr. FPGA to do retro gaming especially, and I didn't find much of anything else, especially like how to set it up on a Mac, uh, how to set it up on a Windows machine, and actually use it for some gaming in that world, and also specifically how to set it up to do some audio production with. Like, how can I have a MIDI controller, which I have, a keyboard, connected and, you know, play back sounds on this and record it analog through my mixer into Reaper or even just record the MIDI, one of the two. So we're going to go through the project, the board, how to build it. Uh, it is a low cost. I, I want to say it probably cost me about 25 bucks to build the hat, somewhere in that range. I have multiples and some spare boards. Uh, PCB way is where I got the boards from, like pretty much everyone else. So we'll go through that. I'll go through the setup on how to get um, the software loaded on it, what it can do, what it can't do. We'll set it up to work with DOSBox on both a Windows machine and a Mac, which is really kind of cool that you can do it on both. That is super nice. And we'll set it up to be callable from a sequencer of some type or uh, a DAW or something that can play back MIDI files, as well as how to set it up to do it's on the network, by the way, so this has an IP address on your network on Wi-Fi, and it does RTP MIDI, so on a Mac, you can MIDI to it remotely from your controller or sequencer or similar devices. Um, could probably do it on Windows, although I don't know how. I'll leave that one up to everybody else. But that's what we're going to talk about. There's the intro. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are with the board itself. Here it is plugged in on my Windows machine. I've got... MIDI in coming into it for my PC. This is audio out going out to my recording setup and we got power coming in. As always, it's just a Raspberry Pi with the 5 volts coming into it. You know, normal power like you do. But that's what it looks like when it's operating. And I'll kind of go over the components itself. Um, basically what you got is the board with uh, a DAC, an I2C DAC, and uh, an LCD or an OLED display in this case, and some buttons that you can use. And I'll kind of go over what the buttons can and can't be used for. But that's kind of what the board looks like. So we'll switch over to, here we go. Here's the project on GitHub, MT32Pi. And this is where you want to go to get everything with. Uh, what's interesting is it is bare metal. So and uh, it's bare metal. You're not going to get any output on the HDMI port. I plugged it into a, an HDMI just to see, and there's nothing that comes out of it. So I don't know if there's a debug or a verbose mode. Well, there is a verbose mode. I don't know what it does. I wonder if there's something maybe it spews out on the console. But there's basically what it is. And it started with the MT32 Pi project. The hardware that lays on top, you have some definite choices on. And I stuck with one particular choice that will go over. But you do have some options, and kind of, if you look through here, nope, that's the wiki. Here is a page uh, in their wiki about the custom hardware. There's a couple of commercial options that you can purchase, but there's also several open source projects. Um, I did look at Clumsy MIDI. I might actually build one of these to see how it does, because I do like how it has two MIDI interfaces. It's got a MIDI in and I think it's a MIDI out or maybe a MIDI through, which is helpful. I might build one of these in the future, but I didn't do that. The bulky MIDI 32, which, you know, kind of lives up to its name. It actually looks really freaking cool because 
it actually has some things that can plug into it with channel monitor and an audio switch and he's got some really neat stuff that you know what one of these days maybe i'll build that one too but the one that i settled in on that was sort of the easiest for me to get into to, to learn how this works was the pi uh the mt32 pi midi hat and this is the one that i'm going to be using in this video as you can see this is exactly what i built right here mine is kind of a, a development version so i could swap out different displays different audio boards to see what i like and i don't like whereas those are all sort of like finally soldered on uh, gerber files are here uh, went right into pcb way very easily got them made and got them shipped out in you know about a week like pcb way always does and you have a couple of options for both the audio and the display here uh, i'm going to go through both of them i like the 1306 the 128 by 32 but I'll also show a 128 by 64 just to show what it looks like. Uh, for the audio side, I went with the PCM5102. I could not find the CJMCU version. I went with the, the GY one, readily available on Amazon. This one I could not find very much, so I didn't, I didn't end up using it. I wouldn't mind trying it if I can get one just to see if it sounds any better any worse any different you never know i think they're the same though so in my build it's the gy one and these two oleds as options uh there's a bunch of others so you could do these old uh lc or the older type lcds and whatnot up to you they all seem to work about the same way and there's a configuration file to drive you know the the width and the height of the thing that we'll get into for the bomb it's really simple Optocoupler, jack, couple of resistors, a diode. It, it's like right out of the MIDI spec for a MIDI in jack. It's super basic. The OLED and the audio board, and that's about it. And the rest is all done on the software. If you notice two sets of switches, they are exactly the same switch set. They can be set up to do the same thing. The difference is if you look, if you, if you select this larger display, and you know, I'll show my board. You can see how this smaller one leaves these buttons open. If you have the larger display, it'll cover those buttons. So if you have the bigger one, you're going to want to use these four here. Uh, the bigger one covers these buttons. It starts here and goes all the way up. Uh, so you have to use these. It's up to you which buttons you use. That's why I was testing. I'm building various ones to see what I like and what I don't like. Bomb is here if you need it, although again, it's a really simple bomb. Have them made up, shipped out, solder it up as always, do the lowest, do the highest parts. So, you know, start with your resistors and your IC, move your way up, you know, shorter to taller. And it's really easy to build. Uh, one of the commercial options I thought I'd mention here is this MT32L. You know, it's what, uh, 74 euros. Uh, it's an option, so if you don't want to DIY it, Although, if you get this completely complete, it's more like 100 euros, so that is an option. But that's really all it is, and it is super simple to build, and just snaps right on. I picked up some of the spacers and connected it all together. Real easy. Uh, I think it took me uh, maybe an hour to build it at the most, so... Uh, We'll move on to the configuration next. So now we're going to talk about the configuration and how to get it working since we're, we did the hardware. Go to GitHub, download the release, and find yourself an SD card. I'm using a fairly small one, 8 gig in this case. I have a bunch of them laying around. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of space to do this unless you have a truckload of sound fonts, which I don't. Partition it, set it up, slap the software on there, you're done. It's listed here in the wiki how to do it. It's really kind of simple to do. One of the things you'll have to do early on is um, start with your configuration. And it does have a configuration file sitting on there, mt32pi.config. There is mine. I left most of the defaults in, and I'll kind of go through the ones that I have changed. Uh, here's your default synth. I am defaulting to the MT32. One of the buttons can be used to switch back and forth. Uh, the control surface. Uh, can be done. 
MIDI stuff I left default uh, output device I did change to be the I uh, I I squared was it I2S whatever that means I can't remember what that one is not I squared C uh, PWM is the on term the internal Pi one don't use that I did change that out uh, so here's the control here is the simple button so I'm using the simple four button scheme it defaults to none turn that on to simple buttons and you get those four on there I would love to have a rotary encoder do not have one hooked up uh, you can up the gain mine is default standard mini channels uh, here's where we get into ROMs so we got to talk about ROMs a little bit this does not have the rolling ROMs that come with it. They are copyright protected, so you have to find the ROMs on your own. They do list them here, which ones are classified as old and new. Search the internet, you'll see what I mean. I am running, I think, the version 204, so I have mine set to new, and I am using the this particular uh, PCM ROM. Defaults to old, I changed mine to new. Here's where you get into the display settings for the LCD, the OLED. I have mine set to basically the 128 by 32 for this smaller one. Uh, I will show a bigger one. Uh, what's interesting is you could do rotate and mirror. So if you turn this thing around, which would probably be interesting. I don't do that right now. Uh, and we get to network. So one of the things I noticed when I had DHCP turned on and I turned mine off and went with the static option, it doesn't seem to have, you know, like Bonjour Discovery Service uh, MDNS on it in their operating environment. So I didn't know which IP it had gotten. So I just statically encoded it. RTP MIDI is turned on by default. You know, you can turn that off. I, mine's on, UDP MIDI's on, and the FTP server, which the FTP server is helpful you can come over here and you can upload to, you can put your sound fonts in or you can put your ROMs in, either one. And of course mine is not going to work now, is it? Let's try this again. Here we go, SD. You can put ROMs in and you can modify your sound fonts. I currently have two of these set up. I have one set up with the general MIDI sound fonts, and if you know the difference, the MT32 has a very distinct set of sounds. If you want to run the MT32, you're going to run that particular profile. But you might also want to do general MIDI stuff, because the instrument per channels are radically different, which I have it set up so you can flip back and forth, and one of the buttons does that. You can bounce back and forth between sound font and MT32 mode. One of mine is set up with a bunch of sound fonts that I use for synthesis, and the other one has just this. That, that, this is my sort of general MIDI version I have set up right now. So FTP is it's helpful. You can put stuff on it. And that's pretty much the configuration. Put it on the the flash on the, on the card and away you go. Plug it in and it should just sort of boot up and go, which you know I'll show what that looks like. I'll unplug it and plug it back in. You get a logo. I think it shows the IP and the version number on the way up. There's the version number. Yeah, there's the Wi-Fi IP. And then it goes into what looks like the original MT32. Eh, Wi-Fi disconnection, weird, figure it out later. Uh, sound fonts, uh, if you track down on the internet, you can find general MIDI sound font sets. They're out there. And that is pretty much uh, it. Uh, the documentation is really good. We'll go through how to set up the Mac and the PC next. But that's kind of where it is. Uh, build your board, put it on, do your configuration file, find your ROMs, and if sound fonts if you want, put it on there, and you're pretty much done at that point. Uh, and that's kind of what it looks like. We'll move on to how to use it in Windows now. Okay, Windows setup time. In this particular case, I have an inexpensive USB to MIDI adapter on here. You show it right here and plug it in. As long as it's detected, you'll see it and it goes. You got that set up. Uh, how do you use it? Option one, we're going to play back uh, a MIDI file uh, 
Right of the Valkyries. Shouldn't get a copyright claim for that one. Should be open. So right now I am in, let's flip modes. You can go, we are in MT32 mode. Actually, we'll flip it right now. Let's go into sound font mode. And this has my general MIDI sound bank on it. I have Cakewalk by BandLab on Windows here set up to use that MIDI interface as its output. And it should go into the Pi, which you should hear the sound then. This is the general MIDI sound bank. Be curious to see how this shows up when I record it. It actually sounds pretty decent to me. <laughs> French horns, really, it's a synthesizer. Yeah, I'll flip it over into MT32 mode so you can hear that one. A little different. Not as great. Yeah, not your thing. Yeah, don't do that. Icky. But the general MIDI on sound font sounds pretty good. So that's how to set that up. That would be just sort of straight through MIDI, MT32 or sound font mode, coming out and going through and you're done. So we'll close that off and move on to the next setup. Okay, next setup. We're going to do a little retro gaming now on a Windows PC. So I have DOSBox installed on here. And in my DOSBox config file, what I have done is put in Win32 for the MIDI device. And the MIDI config in my case is two. So let's fire up DOSBox. And let's go back to the Z drive and let's go mixer list MIDI. I have Munt installed on this machine too, which is basically the software version of this. And that is ID1 and my USB MIDI interface is ID2 which is what I took back over here. I will add, make sure you have nothing else accessing your MIDI device on Windows or because only one thing can have it at a time. On the Mac, that's not the case, but on Windows it is. But there I have it set up, my config file. It is in MT32 mode. And let's go try something. Let's try Ta Angel Monkey. All right, let's try this again. Try monkey, monkey island, two. Uh, in this case, you got to pass in the dash or the R, which means the rolling sound set. So here's where you start getting some oddities. It depends on the game or the, the thing you're playing, if it supports this particular output device. Do a search for supported MT32, and you'll find a bunch of lists that show you which ones do. Monkey Island does. Add the dash R. And this actually sounds really good. Yeah, I'll switch it over so you can see it. That's what it sounds like. I I really like this. This is freaking good. I this sounds excellent. Hopefully this shows up in the recording. We'll see here in a bit. It's really pretty cool. Let's try another one. Oops, this happens. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Uh, I have F15 Strike Eagle 2 on here as well. So let's go to Actually, is there? There's an example of a game that you have to tell it kind of differently. How to use it. Number four, Roland. Should initialize the MIDI interface. Yep, 
and it shows up what's neat is it shows up on the, the mg32 the game name I can't wait to play some games with this. I haven't played a whole lot. I got it work and I want to get this video done, but I'm going to play some games. If this isn't sort of the most 1989, 1990 feeling, uh, you were around then, you know the feeling. Anyways, there it is. I'm going to cut this out. It's going to be the same way sound thing. Or not. Use that, and that's about it. So you got a working MT32 at that point in a hardware to play your games with. Now we're going to go over to the Mac and set that up and see what we can do there. Okay, we're on the Mac now, and I'm going to go through, like I did on the other side, we're going to start first with DOSBox and shipping MIDI over to it. But first, for the setup here on this machine, I have... It's a Mac Studio with uh, Scarlet 4i4 connected. And if you look over on, flip over there, got a MIDI cable coming into it because this particular interface does have a MIDI out in it. So MIDI out, coming from the focus right, going over to the MT32. DOS box is installed. The first thing we're going to do is figure out what to set DOS box to for the interface. And I had a problem with this. If we run DOS box by itself, which, you know, I can show you what happens. Over on Windows, it has the mixer command that you can use to list the MIDI devices. If we look on the Mac OS, we get nothing. This seems to be a known issue with DOSBox, and I haven't been able to locate any known solution for it yet. But they are there, you just have to find them. I use this little tool called MIDI Monitor to like watch for what comes in and goes out to MIDI devices on Mac OS. And if you go in here and look at MIDI Sources or this Spy on Output to Destinations, this appears to be the order in which DOSBox could see them, starting at number zero. So if you count down zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, my Scarlet 4i4 looks like it's ID number six right now. So in the DOSBox configuration, look for MIDI config. And you need to change, well, I don't know if you do, it might, default might work on here for the MIDI device. I changed it to core MIDI because we're on Mac OS and that's what it is. And I set MIDI config to six, which appears to be that device ID. So we'll go back here and we'll fire up that MIDI monitor. And one of the nice parts is we can spy on the output. So both in and out coming to that device. So I'm going to say spy on that across everything. I'll bring that over here out of the way so you can see it. And on the screen, bottom right, you can see the MT32 Pi, and then there's that. And let's go over here and let's bring up DOS box. I already have my C drive mounted. Let's try uh, Monkey Island too. Once again, like on the PC, add the R to use the rolling side. And there you see the MIDI flying over to it. Comes up. And there it is. I can bring the volume up a little bit. And there's that one. Now on the Mac, there's some weirdness. If we exit out once again, I don't know how to get around that problem. One of these days I'll figure that out. Uh, 
so the MIDI in DOSBox seems to send uh, part of the MIDI subsystem on Mac OS sort of bonkers. So I got to exit out of that. Let's try something else. You know, we'll leave the MIDI monitor out. You saw it work, but that's how you can you can check on your Mac to see if you got MIDI flowing correctly. Let's try F15 Strike Eagle. Joystick, no. BGA, and let's go again, rolling sound. Yeah, dead. All right, and here's F15 Strike Eagle. And is it going to work? There you go. I fired a mini monitor to see what it was doing. Now, it does seem to do some weird stuff on, uh, well, actually on both windows, and I think this has to do with subsystems on both. If you stop in the middle of playing, it just seems to do weird stuff and sort of bomb out, which you should probably just quit out of it if you use the right correctly. I don't know what the exit command is. But we'll just quit out, and there is uh, how to set it up on the Mac. And next we'll move on to how we could use a DOF on the Mac with it. Okay, now we're going to get into some uh, interesting stuff on the Mac. We're going to send this MIDI over to the MT32Pi over the network using RTP MIDI. So on the Mac, I've got Reaper loaded up with uh, Ride of the Valkyries, and i got MIDI monitor up with Spy going, and let's bring up audio MIDI setup go to window and then show MIDI studio then MIDI studio open network setup what you want to do is create a session here name it something that you want to use in your your DAW or elsewhere then go down here and add in the name and IP address of the MT32 Pi sitting on your network port 5004 the default then hit connect and it should show up over here now you've established a session between Mac OS and that thing over the network using RTP MIDI. So we'll exit out of here. In Reaper, and I'm not sure about other ones, I've done Logic Pro, but it's similar. You should have a MIDI output, enable it so it can use it. And then in my case, I've got uh, my routing set up to send all of these tracks to the MT32, same channel. I did that top to bottom all the way across, and of note here, this is not the sound font general MIDI set that I have. We'll show that next. This is the default uh, MT32 mode, so I haven't switched it over. This is as an MT32, so you're going to note it doesn't sound terribly great, but it should work. Here we go. We see MIDI going, and there should be audio. And as you can hear, it's not the greatest. That's the default MT32. Again, this MIDI file was probably written for general MIDI. So we'll do that next. Let's switch over to the other one. So uh, I'm going to go over to the Pi, and I'm going to switch it to sound font mode with the general MIDI sound font. Note that uh, supposedly you can send SysX messages down to switch it modes. I, it'll be interesting. I got to try that out and see if I can do it. Then I can just hit a button here on the Mac and boom, tell it to go to sound font mode. But let's push that button, go into sound font mode, and I've got one sound font installed on this, the general MIDI set. Let's hit play. Sounds better. Get the thing they call strings to come in, or whatever it is that... Good old synthesizers. There you go. So that's General MIDI sound font coming from Reaper, being shipped over the Pi over the network. And that's all it takes to set it up, and it works. The next one, what we'll do is, I think... You know, I'll set it up next, and I got a track set up here for my V25 MIDI controller. 
I will load up my other sound fonts in there and set it up to send and you can see what it's like using a MIDI keyboard. And that'll be next. I decided I'm going to use the general MIDI sound font that's in there right now to show this. So what I have on my desk is a small little uh, V25 MIDI controller and up here in Reaper I same config as before with you know Reaper set as uh, MT32 as the output. I've got my input here set as that MIDI device and my routing goes out to the MT32. Got MIDI spy working here. Track is armed so it should work which means and that's it seems to work. That's all there is to it. So in theory, you know, I could hit uh, record up there on the uh, on Reaper, play something. Well, it's only 25 key keyboard, not a whole lot, but it's really good for sound effects and other stuff. So again, you know, you got sound fonts, and there's just a, a, like a bazillion sound fonts out there that you could use and play with. Um, so that's kind of it. That's all the way across the map, the stuff you can do with it. Uh, if you have other ideas, I'd love to hear them. Uh, it's really just an interesting thing. It does have some idiosyncrasies, little stuff here, little stuff there, as you've seen and heard. But, you know, computers, what can I say? They're not always the most reliable things. Technology works, doesn't work. Um, so, you know what? What I'll do is i got a collection of games and some other MIDI files that I'll just sort of play some samples of both sides and uh, let you listen to that on the way out. Mm -hmm.